massive amounts of data being sort of focused down into a right here, right now application. Algorithms rule the day. So Tim, we're here to talk about a big issue I know you're very passionate about, which is data. Yeah. Give us your view on what's going on in that world. Well, it became clear to me probably about 10 years ago that data was going to become the heart of competitive in, uh, advantage uh, in the internet era. Uh, it struck me that uh, you know, we went from a period in which hardware was dominant to one in which software was dominant. And what I saw with the rise of uh, you know, sites like Google, eBay, Amazon, uh, and, and really also financial trading firms, you started to see that uh, collecting massive amounts of data, often gathered through uh, uh, you know, what I came to call collective intelligence, mm -hmm. you know, um, and network effects in data, databases that literally get richer and fuller the more people use them, um, but really uh, all kinds of applications based on data were going to be the next wave in the computer industry. And that actually was the heart of what uh, I called Web 2.0. I, I sort of saying we're actually building an internet operating system in which the subsystems are data subsystems. And now people at the time thought it was a joke. At our first Web 2 conference, in fact, Bram Cohen of BitTorrent made fun of me for saying it was an operating system. And yet, when you pick up a smartphone today and you get your location and you search for things around you, you realize, oh, wait a minute, all these things aren't residing on the phone. They're calling out to big databases in the sky you know, right. and that are delivering services to my device. And so that vision of an, a data-driven internet operating system is really now is, uh, I think, uh, the reality. And we're, we're still starting to figure out exactly what that means, what competencies are required. Uh, you know, we, we see peop companies with uh, titles like chief data scientist and... Uh, you know, algorithms rule the day. And so as you look at the, the evolution that we're going through, obviously we're learning to collect data, mm -hmm. but without using that data appropriately, we're really not doing anything. Do you see that there are particular maturity stages that we're going to go to on, on having useful information? Yeah, I think there's a lot of areas where we already can see uh, you know, what a mature data application looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you use uh, maps on your phone, uh, you know, it's real time, you know, or close to it. You know, it needs to know where you are right now. Yep. <laughs> yep. And of course that, uh, you know, says a lot about the future of privacy because of course people in order to use that application are giving up their location data. You know, never mind, uh, you know, everybody gets in a, uh, panic about, uh, oh, oh, why would I want to check in with Foursquare? I go, well, guess what? You're checking in every time you use your mobile phone, and when you use a mapping application, yeah. it's sort of showing you where you are. Uh, and, uh, you know, increasingly, uh, we're, so we, we, see, we see the real-time aspect. We see the fact that uh, massive amounts of data being sort of focused down into a right here, right now application. Uh, that actually delivers a point service to people. Uh, so it just seems natural. And, uh, you know, it's, it's no longer uh, this idea that I'm searching a database for some generic answer. Uh, it really is, oh, I have a function. You know, and it could be, you know, a function driven by an application like Yelp. Oh, I want to find the nearest right. Chinese restaurant. I want to find the one that people like best. Uh, or it could be... Um, you know, uh, you know something like I just heard that song. Uh, let me, you know, spin up Shazam and identify it. Um, There's a huge opportunity yeah. where we see definitely for organizations uh, yeah. thinking about their data strategy is, is thinking about is the data actionable, is the yeah. data timely, and yeah. is it data that's relevant to me yeah. as an end user? And certainly there's a lot of work to be done there. There's also the, the area around mashup, right? It's, yeah. You're not going to get all the information that you need from one data yeah, source. Absolutely. Are you seeing uh, organizations leading there in the ability to mash up and aggregate information mm. across multiple I, systems I so they a, mean something yeah. to the individual? I think there's a lot of missing expertise in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for people just to think more broadly about who else has data that would make my data better. I had a really great example of this at a brainstorming meeting at the Department of Health and Human Services uh, where they were talking about uh, community health data and um, uh, they were talking about smoking rates and somebody 
raised their hand and said, I just want to point out that we only have survey data for certain counties and we don't have it for every county in the U.S. and, and it would cost $30 million to do the survey, uh, mm -hmm. you know, get all that data up to date. And I, I kind of raised my hand and I said, um, yeah, doesn't Treasury collect tobacco taxes and wouldn't that be a reasonably good proxy you know, for you know, smoking rates on a county by county basis? And they're like, oh. We didn't think about right. that. You know, uh, you know, just that idea that, that somebody else's data might fill a hole in your data. And also just that you don't have to necessarily get the absolute right answer. You know, a lot of this is getting good approximations and, and then seeing uh, if, if they give you meaningful outcomes. I think the thing that's really, really interesting today is that the lessons, you know, from the consumer internet and from other cutting edge areas like financial services are starting to bleed back into the mainstream. And what we learn is that the traditional model of business intelligence, uh, which is really of a person generating reports, studying them and making a decision, is really changing to one in which you uh, study data in order to refine an algorithm mm -hmm. which makes the decision. And I, I had this great experience some number of years ago uh, uh, watching the book buyer at Borders mm -hmm. uh, doing reorders. And it looked like somebody playing a computer game like Tetris. You know, she'd flash up on the screen what was the previous buying pattern. She had a nice visualization. And, and she had like five classes of stores. And she'd look for this book. Okay, this is how it's sold. And, and then she'd make a decision and rebuy and bang. You know, and then on to the next one. It was sort of like the screen. Decision, screen, decision, screen, decision. And, you know, I would bet that at a really sophisticated place like Walmart, it's more like there's some algorithm that's doing the buying. And, peri that. and periodically uh, they say, oh, we ran out. And then they go, okay, well, the algorithm's wrong. And so you really have somebody who's tweaking the algorithm. You know, so it's a lot more like program trading than like that old model of the person studying the data and making a decision. We've we found as we look at how organizations are using data, we found that there's three relationships. There's data to data, which yeah. is a little bit of what you're talking about, the automation yeah, yeah. of yeah. there's people to people, the type of information we're exchanging and how yeah, you can yeah. capture that. And there's people to data, which can yeah. be either I'm cleaning my data, refining my yeah, data, sure. or using data that's being yeah. refined so I can make better decisions. Now I know we could be here and talking for hours. Yeah. Uh, you've got lots of great events where people can find out more. The next event is in New York. Where do they go to find out more about the work that you're doing? Oh, I think if you just go for this conference, strataconf.com. Uh, also, we just there's a lot at O'Reilly.com about books and the like that we're publishing. Data is a big focus of our of our publishing business these days as well. Uh, it really is the currency of uh, a lot of the most exciting things happening in the future of computing. Thank you very right, much for you. your time, Tim. All right, take care. Until next time, I'm Bruno Ziza.